Tim Yang Yang shows two photons being entangled in real time, so it's true. A stunning crazy. experiment which reconstructs the properties of entangled protons from a 2D interface pattern. When you quantumly entangle two photons, they look like yin and yang. Do you know how insane this is? These particles are entangled in some way where they don't have to be in the same place and time but they react to each other. It's a weird connection between two far apart particles that Albert Einstein objected to as spooky action at a distance. Enables two light particles or photons to become inextricably bound to each other so that a change to one causes a change in the other no matter how far apart they are. As any measurement of one also causes an instantaneous change in the other. He's a fan of the yin and yang. I don't know why, but quantum yin and yang this is interesting. Let me know your thoughts below on this. What's well, good? You guys already know what time it is. Hit that like and subscribe button and let's dive into these videos. The yin yang. We've all seen this symbol, but what does it actually mean? Now this symbol is a lot more complex than people think. It's so much more than just light and dark or any of these dualities. It actually represents the unfolding process of creation according to Chinese metaphysics. Now in Chinese philosophy, it is said that before all things, there was simply Wu Ji, an obscure word that often has three meanings, the infinite, the nonpolar, and the void or nothingness. In this way, Wu Ji could represent an infinite non-dual metaphysical nothing that came before everything. It is an undifferentiated state of pure oneness that existed before duality, which nonetheless contains the potential for differentiation. Now out of this potential there came the differentiation into duality, or yin and yang. Two forces that are the archetypes of all complementary opposites in the universe. Like life and death, creation and destruction, male and female, and so on. Now it is said that the yin and yang actually came together and created Tai Ji, which is the symbol that most of you know. It represents what happens when yin and yang come together and create an eternal dance that basically transforms everything in the universe. This dance is essentially the heartbeat of the universe, according to which everything around us is always undergoing a constant cycle of change and transformation of opposites. For example, from night to day and day to night, creating an everlasting dance between night and day. Or from life and death and death to life, creating an everlasting dance between life and death. And the same goes for all dualities. Now I'll go over how this transformation of opposites actually happens in part 2. And for those that don't want to wait, you can watch my new YouTube video in which I- Yin and Yang are more real than we thought. Scientists have recently re-imaged two entangled particles which produced a Yin Yang like photo. Entangled particles are so deeply connected that they can send information instantaneously from across the universe. This action is what Einstein famously called spooky action at a distance. Quantum entanglement is a non-local function which proves that consciousness resides outside of the body and can eternally interact with all known dimensions. Alright, let's talk about this symbol right here. All right, let's talk about this symbol right here and what it means. This is the yin yang symbol, also known as Taijitu, and it simply represents our perceived duality in life as one whole. That the good goes with the bad, that the highs go with the lows, and that these two often opposing things or seemingly opposing things always have seeds planted in one another. That is to say, if we thought of black as death and white as life, these two things are always in flux, right? From life comes death and from death comes life. They are not inherently separate, they are part of the same process, a unified process. Without one, there cannot be another. Or if we think of one as happiness and one as sadness, the seed of happiness exists in sadness the same way the seed of sadness exists in happiness. Because those two experiences, although we perceive them separately, are tied together. Without one, we cannot know the other and vice versa. It simply wants to show us that everything we experience in life, no matter what levels it might be on, are unified and tied together in some form. All right, let's talk about this symbol right here and what it means. This is the yin yang. My favorite story. You probably have my favorite story of the day is that quantum photography has revealed that two entangled photons look almost identical to a yin yang. You can see the left uncolored photo here of the raw image and then one that's been recolored to show it just a little bit more clearly on the right hand side. 
And ladies and gentlemen, that's a yin yang, yin and yang, the classic uh, Chinese Confucius symbol. You've probably seen this on temples. You've probably seen this in martial arts films. If you're familiar with my content, well, you've probably just seen it here on my arm. We'll get a nice close up of that. And I think this is super cool. So what these are, these aren't atoms, these are photons that have been entangled. That's kind of what quantum computing is running on at the moment and a focus of research. And you might have heard about Einstein's spooky action at a distance, which is when photons become entangled with each other, their properties also become entangled. And even though you can separate them, if you collapse one photon to the best of our ability to tell, the other photon will collapse in a similar or identical way, if I'm not mistaken, despite the distance. We, you know, a lot of our theory is that information itself cannot travel faster than the speed of light. And this tentatively seems to violate that. And I'm, I find that kind of surprising. And what's also very cool about this is the way it works. Uh, so da, 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 quantum tomography, by taking a complex quantum state and applying a projection to it, they measure some property belonging to the state, such as its polarity, momentum, isolation, others. And they repeat this multiple times with each other uh, to get multiple states because a quantum object can have a variety of states. And then the hard part is getting rid of the disallowed non-physical states that maybe kind of sort of don't exist in the same way that we think about them existing. And they used optical holograms to, <laughs> to kind of fast track that process and only show the accessible, easy, we'll generously say real parts of a quantum object. All parts are real, but let's keep it simple for now. And I just think this is super cool. And uh, maybe the ancient Chinese were onto something. My favorite story of the day is that quantum photography That is incredibly interesting. Maybe they were onto something. Only have heard Real quick, I'm gonna tell you why Yin Yang is demonic. <laughs> you you ever seen that coexist sign, right? All religions are the same, they got the same gods and everything else. That's because there is a secret society that has been around since literally Adam and Eve. I'm trying, I'm gonna try to simplify this as much as possible. Every esoteric art, every alchemy, any kind of magic or whatever, whatever, whatever you wanna call it in each of these cultures, work off of a bastardized understanding given by the, Satan himself of angelic knowledge. But do you think that Satan's gonna give you the real deal? Satan is a lawyer and he's a brash businessman. That whole good versus evil stuff is only controlled opposition in the spirit realm because this is where you get the good magic white magic versus black magic under whose authority if it's not under god's authority it's evil as much as you try to fake and pretend like you got morals you're just copying off a guy establishing your own judgments that's why witches and, and, and these druids and whatnot gotta put stuff in your face in the media and everything else and tell you what they're about to do before they do it because they believe in karmic retribution. If they tell you what they're gonna do beforehand and put it in your face and you do not oppose it, it is full legal grounds for them, right, quote unquote, to do what they want and they're not gonna get punished for it because, well, they told you. For example, they can tell you, well, uh, we made this artificial sweetener. So they let you know that this is not real sugar. This is man-made. It's fake. But it tastes sweet. But then you find out that this stuff causes cancer. Well, we told you it was artificial. If you did the whole background homework on it, that's your problem. We didn't have to. We told you it was man-made. Karmic retribution. Or, for example, somebody could teach you, well, I'm going off of God's laws, right? We teach healthy godly marriage sounds good right because they're using bible verses but then you find out that their version of a healthy marriage is totally toxic and they'll use bible verses to justify it karmic retribution so depending on your flavor you can just be outright wicked and lawless right lawless even though they got their laws as well and say satan will give you his his demons the offspring of offspring of the angels to help you out or you can have a higher moral ground and be a magical lawyer and Satan will give you the white side, the, the fallen angels. You don't remember? I will go up into the heavens and I will be as the most high and be the most high. If it's not from the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob himself, it's demonic. Real quick, I'm going to tell you why Yin Yang is demonic. And this is a heated debate. 
top comment says yin yang light and darkness yin and yang lets you know that there's a balance cold versus hot day versus night good versus evil nothing demonic about it but he responded yin and yang is the flea market version of understanding god's true operation totally corruption corrupted version of truth they said peace sign is a pyramid with a beam of light coming out the top now you can't unsee it i said it first <laughs> oh my god this kid actually called a creature that can travel through space and time. He recorded a strange image with a cell phone. Let's see what the following this is. This video about. is translated Record. using AI, but this like is a real news that, story. I don't tell you. Yes, tell me after. Well, that's where we look. And the truth is, is that he looks like a man, like, which is not, is not of our time. Very creepy the other hand, the son of Tito Catapo took a cell phone and started recording what his father was doing. First, his tattoo on his back. Then the little boy sang his face, turned the phone over, and left it. A rare creature appears at the end of the record. They did not notice anything. Everything was discovered. What by is Jack. that? It's nothing like I've ever seen before, and I don't think you watch it. Just tell said, me what it is. Daddy, are you going to watch the video? So I started to check it out, and in the end, it came out that how did you feel when? That thing is definitely not from this earth. And remember, this video was translated using AI. But this is a real news story. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay weird. How creepy was that? It kind of resembled a reptilian, didn't it? It's been a huge breakthrough in quantum computing as 1.58 dimensions is apparently the correct amount of dimensions to unlock zero loss energy efficiency. And I know this sounds like a gigantic mouthful of scientific buzzwords. I'm going to try to break it down in a meaningful way today. But one of the first things that I noticed is that this new type of material, which we'll talk about, looks a lot like a Triforce. I just had to point that out. I don't know what sort of magic or Zelda is involved, but this is basically magical. And what you're looking at here in yellow and brown is bismuth, is bismuth on top of indium. And what's interesting about this is these are known as topological insulators, which have a different material outside and inside, with the inside being insulating and the outside having a various number of complicated quantum states that allow them to conduct electricity. In this case, scientists in China have managed to make one function in fractional dimensions. It's not something we think about often. We think about dimensions as one, two, three, something like that. Uh, fractional dimensions are a real thing and the math behind them just fundamentally breaks my brain. So I'm not gonna get into that too much, but fractional dimension 1.58 is apparently the correct amount to create near lossless energy transfer because it's one singular uh, piece of matter with the indium and the bismuth just touching each other. It's pretty much completely lossless transfer. Now we knew about these things having in one, two, and three cube dimensions. Uh, th these were just discovered in the 1980s. They were noted for their fractal nature, which is sort of this recurring pattern down toward infinity. And ah, here is a very good explanation. They got a Nobel Prize for discovering this. On the inside, topological insulators are insulating, while at their boundaries, there are currents running. This makes them very suitable for applications in quantum technologies and could reduce world energy consumption enormously. So the only downside is they have to be very, very cold to exist. So it's very difficult. However, scientists recently managed to put bismuth on top of indium, and apparently that works for creating one of these things. I'm going to see how we try to describe it. Uh, by growing a chemical element, bismuth, on top of semiconductor indium antimonide, the scientists in China obtained fractal structures that were spontaneously formed upon varying the growth conditions. The scientists then theoretically showed that from these conditions, a zero-dimensional corner modes and lossless one-dimensional edge states have emerged, which is very complicated. As they describe, by looking between the two dimensions, we have found the best of both worlds because the fractals behave like two-dimensional topological insulators at finite energies and at the same time exhibit zero energy, a state that at its corners could be used as a qubit. My god, it took us a long time to get there, which are the building blocks of quantum computers. So the Triforce in Zelda is real. When you look down at it on a very cold microscopic level and when you look at that infinite energy it kind of resembles the triforce on zelda let me know in the comments what you guys think so they're hoping that they're making 
future qubits for quantum computers that would be nearly, it'd be like 99.9999999 on off toward infinity uh, level of efficiency, which would be fantastic. And uh, boy, this one's so complicated, it's hard for me to explain. I think it's going to be a very long time before this hits like uh, mainstream manufacturing. I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> it's massive. We're a walking universal library. We are the way for the universe to figure out and explore the third dimension and understand what it's like to be and live in the third dimension as every individual living thing. And we're all connected through this quantum entanglement. Every single, every single thing that exists is all connected, still connected. Space is an illusion. Distance is an illusion. Separation is all an illusion. What do you mean it's an illusion? We appear to be sitting in two separate chairs with a space in between us. Mm -hmm. But we're all atoms on an energetic grid that's connected and has always been connected. So the space in between us appears to be a distance. But if you go on the quantum level, you discover that we're both local. We're still in the same position, which is the original position. This entire universe is made up of a complete holography. We're living in a fractal holographic matrix, a matrix of light. And it doesn't take away from there being a creator because what I'm telling you about is the method used of this to make this creation the method is a fractal holographic matrix a matrix of light quantum physicists will tell you that a human being exists both as a wave of light and also solid matter and they've got the first image of a wave converting into solid matter on a, on a special type of camera this is in physics.org so in wave particle duality they discovered that everything in the entire universe exists first as waves of light until a conscious observer interacts with it and then it collapses. This is hard to wrap your mind around, but imagine this. Isn't that called like the split helix test or something like that? I think it's like the split helix. Like you can't observe matter until you look at it. You know, how creepy is that? We're sitting here, your house, it exists as a wave of potentials, not your house. It's a wave of light. Now, the construction technique of the stacking of those atoms that built your house has a specific resonant frequency. So no matter who looks at it, it always collapses into the same exact shape. But if nobody's looking, it's just a wave of potentials. Until you see it, when you bend the corner, it collapses back into a solid structure. This is now well-known proven science due to the double slit experiment. If you look that up, you'll find out they took a microscopic box. They put a little gun inside that can shoot individual electrons through slits inside the box to, sit, to hit the back wall. So the two slits here, and they want these particles to hit the back wall to see if it was gonna make a digital imprint on the back wall. Well, when they did this, when they looked, it was waves. So they said, wait a minute, how can there be a wave pattern on the back wall? We shot individual single electrons through the slits. This should be dot, 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 dot. I said, we gotta look at this and see what's going on. So they put a camera in the box to see what was happening. When they looked, just looking, all of a sudden the electron said, oh, you're looking at me? Okay, I'm going to go back to being solid matter now, dot, 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 dot. Took the camera away, waves. Put the camera back, dot, 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 dot. Oh, electrons are conscious. They, they are aware that they're being observed. And electrons orbit every atom in the universe, which means every atom is conscious. That means you think that you're sitting in a chair that's just made by man. We didn't make this chair. We stacked atoms. We stacked conscious atoms in a format that allowed us to sit on them. Everything is conscious. This chair is conscious. This suit is conscious. Everything is conscious because they're all made of atoms. And all we are ourselves are a stack of conscious atoms observing ourselves right now. You see? And so it gets really deep, man. I, mean, I, can go, I can go deeper and deeper, but it's pretty powerful stuff. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. That's the first time I ever heard him laugh. So the, the benefit of knowing this, imagine teaching your kids that everything that exists is conscious. A rock, a blade of grass, your clothing, even your book bag is aware. It's conscious. Imagine teaching them how to respect conscious things. The level of respect they will have for their personal items, their bike, their clothing, their book bag, their, you know, their schoolwork. Understanding and knowing that everything that they interact with, everything they touch or see, has a level of consciousness imbued into it. Now you're training your kid to be a, a, you know, a super conscious person that understands, like, treat everything that exists 
no matter whether we think man-made it or it's natural, with respect and dignity. That's the depth of understanding that people need to get to. And when we can get to that level of understanding, whew, wow. <laughs> so if we're, all st- if we're all, I mean, in which we are, I do understand, if we're all s- stacked atoms, yeah. stacked conscious atoms, yeah. <clears throat> what holds us together? Electromagnetic forces. That's what holds us together. You don't touch anything. So I may look like I'm touching this chair right now, right? I'm not actually touching the chair. You actually never touch anything. The repulsion of the electromagnetic frequency orbiting the electrons and atoms in my hand are repelling the ones inside the chair, creating a repulsive force, not allowing my hand to pass through the chair. Because honestly, atoms are 99.999% empty space. And so what that means is atoms are mostly empty. There's nothing there. The only thing we have is these electromagnetic fields that give us the illusion of separation and, and solidity. And so if I can obtain the atomic frequency of the vibration of the atoms in this chair and make my hand match that frequency, I would pass my hand right through the chair like it didn't even exist. So so there's probably people, beings, maybe on other planets or maybe even here now, that have learned this technique. We're going to match the frequency of this wall and just walk right through. Imagine a military puts on a special suit that can match the frequency of a solid, solid concrete wall and walk right through the wall. It's going to look like magic. It's just technology, you see? They understand how to match frequencies. If I took all 8 billion people on Earth and took away the empty space in their atoms, I can fit every human being into one sugar cube. There's nothing here. <laughs> We're not even here. That's how, It's really our higher selves. See, our consciousness doesn't exist. It's not created by the brain, I should say. It exists, but it's not created by the brain. It exists in a higher dimension. It doesn't... It doesn't it's here in the third dimension now because it's inhabiting this avatar body, but it's coming in on a screen, on a beam of light, on, a, on an invisible beam. It's 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 we're we're inhabiting it's inhabiting this avatar body. If you understand that your body doesn't create the consciousness, it downloads it, and what downloads it into your body? You have your neural correlates of consciousness, which are three giant neurons that wrap around the inside of the skull like a giant crown of thorns. Sound familiar? Everyone walks around with a crown of thorns in their head right now. And then you have your neocortex in the front, which is for spatial and higher reasoning. And then you have your magnetite crystals. Uh, And so those three things together harness and hold in the frequency that is you, that is saying, you know, this is who I am. And it allows you to inhabit temporally, time, temporally, this avatar body until this avatar body gives out and ceases to operate and exist because of entropy and releases that spirit energy back into the source where it will then be recycled once again somewhere else. And so this, um, the understanding of this is, is just so powerful because you got to understand that you are already eternal. We're already eternal beings. We're, 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 when you talk to yourself, you're talking to your higher self from a higher dimension. You're speaking to yourself in another realm. We are all supernatural, eternal beings. A lot of people are trying to fight to become eternal, but we already are eternal. We've already been here for eons and eons. There could be people that you know that look like kids that are ancient. And there also can be people that are older people that are newborn babies, spiritually. Could be their first time arriving here in this energy format. You're talking about old souls. Old souls, right. Exactly. Old souls. There could be a kid that could be ancient, could be eons old. And there could be a a lady that could be 70 that could be brand new. First cycle here. First time, first time operating in this energy, in this spiritual energy, in this dimension. Uh, You know, so it's just, it's a lot to grasp. I know I threw a lot at, a lot at you at once, but (laughs) it's such a huge story. I think it's really amazing. For me, it makes me feel more incredible. I feel like I'm part of something super massive and big. I don't think it makes me feel small at all. I feel like because everything is connected that everything is me and everything is you. If I'm talking to you. I'm really talking to myself. There's only one consciousness that exists. Well, that, that was actually a question I wanted yeah. to ask you. Do you think that we share consciousness? Absolutely. Well, then <clears throat> if we share consciousness, why are there, why is there good and evil? I do believe to a certain extent, we all are on the same consciousness. We can almost like how telepathy works in a way. Like, have you ever reached for your phone 
to call somebody and they literally called you right as you reached up your phone, that's us being on the same consciousness. So I think that there's certain levels to it. Um, I don't agree with everything Billy Carson says, but how he breaks it down definitely makes you think how other ways energy can be portrayed, like how we live eternally. I think we live eternally in certain aspects. How we live eternally depends on how we live on this life now and how we do on this earth. Manifestation, the law of reversibility. If water can turn into steam, then steam can turn into water. Steam and water are the same thing vibrating on a different frequency. If circumstance can produce a feeling, then feeling can produce circumstance. Mass can turn into energy and energy can turn into mass. This is science. Think of Einstein's E is MC squared. E is energy, M is mass and C is speed of light. What you are seeking is also seeking you. Thoughts are waves. Waves carry frequencies and energy. Mass also carries frequency and energy. Mass is bound by space and time. Waves exist everywhere beyond space and time. If you can think of your desire, then it is already existing in another dimension in the quantum field. It just has no mass yet. All waves exist in the quantum field. The quantum levels are different realities, but your mind has the ability to pick up on that frequency. Everything is energy. Everything vibrates. Since thoughts are waves, they determine in what reality you live in. You are giving your thoughts energy through emotions. Emotions are energy in motion. Our emotions are the light in Einstein's equation. In order to quantum jump into your desired reality, you have to align your vibration to the frequency of your desire. That's where the subconscious mind comes in. This is why emotional control and thought control are vital. Change the paradigm in your subconscious mind. It is the subconscious mind that controls your vibration. It has almost exclusive control over your thoughts. Most of the thoughts you think today are the same thoughts you thought of yesterday. Place your attention and therefore your emotions, which is energy in motion, on the thoughts you want to manifest instead of the things you don't want to manifest. You have the power to consciously reject the thoughts you don't want to turn into mass. Reason why many people can't manifest what they want is because they rely only on their five senses. But not only do you have your five senses, you also have higher faculties. These are intuition, will, perception, reason, imagination and memory. But we were never taught how to use those. We were taught to rely only on our five senses. That means we are letting the outside influence the inside. But we as humans create our own environment. That means what happens on the inside mirrors itself on the outside. The mirror principle. That's why there are whole bloodlines continuing the cycle of poverty and misfortune. Their five senses, which are connected to the conscious, rational mind, pick up on that. Because they are unaware of the fact that their inside mirrors itself into the outside, they accept the things their five senses pick up on. Use your higher faculties to trick your five senses. It is the inside that mirrors itself into the outside. Your vibration determines in which reality you live in. Use your perception. Change how you perceive things. Use your imagination. Visualize the things you want instead of the things you don't want. Get yourself into the emotional state of the version of you that already has what you desire. Always be calm and relaxed. If you are not, it means your mind is in a state of lack and fear. Einstein said, match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. You are constantly creating your reality. Start to consciously create the life you want today. I'm sure most of you have already heard about the power of liquids. Take some water or perfume, meditate on it, hold it your hands while meditating and speak your affirmations onto it. For example, wealth, success, abundance. Do this for at least 11 minutes. Now, every time you drink the water or smell the perfume, it will remind you of your affirmations. Now think of the version of you that has everything you desire. 
Act and feel like this person. Thoughts that constantly repeated in your head will produce corresponding emotions. Thoughts that are felt make their way into your subconscious mind, the creative force that controls your life. From there, the energy of that thought's frequency gets passed onto your sympathetic nervous system. This energy is now a part of your DNA and affects your vibration. Your vibration attracts things to you that are in harmony with it. Not only that, your subconscious mind has almost exclusive control over your habits, which control your actions and therefore your results. 90% of your behavior is habitual. Your subconscious mind also controls your thoughts and feelings. Most of the thoughts you think today are the same thoughts you thought of yesterday. Take control of your thoughts and emotions. Change the paradigm in your subconscious mind and get the life. This is so crazy to me. There's actually scientific proof that humans are not physical beings and that in fact, nothing in our universe is physical or solid. This is a picture of a quark. So quantum physics tells us that everything is fundamentally made up of atoms. Everything in our universe is made up of atoms that are made up of electrons, neutrons, and protons. And protons and neutrons are made up of quarks. And electrons are made up of leptons. But what are quarks and leptons made of? They're made of nothing. Quarks and leptons are just pure energy. Quarks and leptons are fast moving points of pure energy. They're made up of literally nothing. They are nothing. So that means that at the fundamental core of the atom and therefore at the fundamental core of everything in our universe, there is no material there. It's just pure energy. It's energy vortices. You are just energy vortices. Energy is only transformed. It's neither created nor destroyed. So this energy that is you and that is everything persists forever. It is immortal. So this means that you're not just a temporary flesh sack that lives for 80 years then dies forever. You are the same energy as everything in our universe. So this means that humans are purely eternal spiritual beings and that the physicality and solidity of everything is just an illusion. You are an immortal divine being. And next time you feel alone, just know that you can't be alone because you literally are one with everything. Using quantum physics, which has done so well by us, yeah. perhaps the most successful theory ever about anything, fails in its attempt to predict the amount of dark energy in the universe. Yeah. And it fails badly by a factor of a Google. Wow, by a factor Bigger of a- Bigger than a Google. It's like 10 to 123 or 100, something. Yeah, Google is 10 to the 100? Yeah. It gets the wrong answer by the biggest amount ever in a mismatch between theory and observation. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Where are we with the dark energy theorists? Well, look, what this is showing us is that quantum mechanics is incredibly successful when you apply it to the electromagnetic force, to the weak nuclear force, to the strong nuclear force. But we've long known that when you apply it to gravity, something goes wrong, something changes. This is the motivation for string theory. And this is the motivation for trying to go beyond conventional approaches. This machine can create nearly the coldest conditions in the universe at about 460 degrees below zero. In that environment, a radically new kind of computer may change civilization as we know it. We're looking at a race between China, between IBM, Google, Microsoft, Honeywell, because the nation or company that does this will rule the world economy. Guys, if you made it this far, be sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We do these daily. So I'm going to see you guys same time, same place. Have a great day. Thank you for watching this creepy video with your boy. Peace out.